Good evening everybody. It's Micheline from Michelle Makes again with this is a natter vlog because a natter vlog because I've got some vlogs to put up. I've got a five and seven to do and I've got some uh, me make some some makes pattern makes that I've made but I just want to give you a little natter about what like what's life what's happening to me at the moment. Um, a, a lot of you if you watched my previous vlog I was telling you about how we were moving um, we were moving out of our building and um, everything was up and messy and everything and we just dumped a lot of it in a container that we have that we've uh, rented at the airport and the other stuff has been deposited in my back room it's been deposited in the kitchen it's been deposited in his shed number one and down the side of the house and basically it's got to, it was uh, to be sorted we needed to go through it because the thing was the sale happened so quickly we hadn't expected to sell the building in fact i was worrying because i kept saying after lockdown we won't be able to sell it and this our neighbour very kindly rang up halfway through I've told you the story made the offer so we hadn't planned on having to vacate in, in such a short time and I think it was on the Monday that the solicitor rang up and said to us uh, the sale is going to be completed on the th on the fr Thursday the sale is going to be completed on the Friday and we just went what <laughs> so we had um four days to clear as much as we could we had four days uh quite a few of those was just between me and him and I'm, I'm repeating myself so i won't go on but anyway we decided to leave everything we went on holiday and we said we'd sort it when we came back but we forgot that we had the grandchildren staying with us for the for the week after that so the two granddaughters on my side and for a couple of days the two granddaughters on his side stayed and of course when you're looking after four children you don't have time to tidy up well you have time to tidy up because you're tidying up after them all the time but you don't have time to do to start organizing and clearing because there were always one of them's a little one and she's always you know granddad this and mimi this and so on so um we took them out for days and we just thought right let's just work our way around all this mess and let's tidy it up once they're gone so um we did that we left everything we took the girls out here there and everywhere and i'll just put a little snippet of us we went for a little walk along uh, along the riverbank at richmond and take note of the little one because the little one runs slightly funny at the moment she always looks like she's falling over and the reason being that when her mum was pregnant this is the second child um they identified that she had talipes which is another word for the, the the posh word let's say for club foot and they asked if she wanted to terminate the pregnancy and she said no because she checked it up and read out all about it and apparently uh some famous people were born like that uh, um I, my mind i can't remember his name but a top england footballer had, was born like that and after a lot of operations and treatment he plays for England he played for England and so I put his name up there when I come when when I remember it or when his lordship tells me what he's called anyway so she was born and she was born with her feet turned backwards slightly out that way and so um, from being not long after being born they started do twisting her feet round and then she had to have her Achilles heel at the back cut to make it bend a bit more and she, every night she has to wear this bar across her legs to point her legs that way and she's getting there she's getting this she's 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 tolerating this quite a lot bless her but she is such a happy little girl and I thought you might like to see how she she wants to run and she's she runs like mad and she loves she loves uh, running with all the girls well here we are it's what day is it wednesday it's thursday no it's wednesday when it's wednesday the 5th of august mm -hmm. and these two ladyships that one there and that one here are stopping with us they've been on holiday with us to amble and they're staying for till saturday and then we're going back 
and they asked if they could be on my vlog. These two girls live south of near west of London, southwest of London, and their mummy's my daughter, so she talks with a Geordie accent. And they talk with a posh accent, those We're two. not posh. We're not posh. But what they do do is they don't, what do you call my my daughter? What do you call her? Mam. Mam. No, they call her mam. But people down south call them mummy, mummy or mum. And what else do you get at night when you go, when you got, you will say, you've got to go upstairs and get a, a bath instead of a, Boss. Boss. Boss, yeah. So that although they live down south in the posh part, they've still got a little bit of Geordiness about them. Right, well, we better go and look for the other half of the of the batch, shouldn't we? Yay! For his lordship and his granddaughters. See you later. Bye. She says she's going to win. She's going to win. You chase them. See if you can beat them, Indy. See if you can beat them. Are you winning, Indy? Well, we've been for a walk. We've had a drink and ice cream, a cakey thing. What, what did you have? Shortbread. Oh yeah. And now they've had a delicious ice cream. You should see the size of it. Massive ice cream. What did you have, Alexa? I had one strawberry in a tub. You had two in a tub, and it was what strawberry? No, one scoop. One scoop of strawberry. Yeah, in a tub. In a tub. And then Claudia had her mint favourite chocolate. mint chocolate. No, my favourite's lemon and mint chocolate. All oh, right, but she's had mint chocolate there. And I didn't have any because I'm not really that keen on ice cream. So, you we all know I'm a savoury person. They are sweet. And look what we found. We don't know whose it is, but a little necklace with the ballet dancer on. It's not a, it's not an expensive one, it's just a little cheap cheap one. But some little girl has lost that. Catch you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs> so then um the Brian's two little girls, they went off on Thursday and we my two we headed off back down to um to Leicester to hand them over when we met halfway handed the girls over and then off they went well we are in the car and we're heading down to Leicester to drop these two little girls off there and there his lordship is driving oh is this for the, uh, the sewing ladies this is for the sewing ladies yes what girls Girls. Don't look at the camera. No. All right, well, at can the I talk to them? Can to Girls, talk to them, right. Show them my tooth. Show them my tooth. Oh, right. Well, I don't know if I can do it that way. There now. There Did you see that? He's got his tooth back. He's thrilled a bit. He came in and he stood in front of these two. I didn't notice for ages. And he smiled at them and he kept smiling and smiling and they didn't notice. And then who noticed it first? You can't remember. <laughs> anyway, we're on our way down to Leicester to drop the two girls to meet their mummy. This big one here was upset all night because she couldn't get to sleep. She was sleep talking all night. And then she was sleep talking through the night and she was saying, I miss my mummy and daddy. And I said, Well, you're going to see them today. So, and we've set off early because it's supposed to be going to be the hottest day but it doesn't look that way at the moment there's clouds and um but i think it's going to be quite hot by the time we get down there so there you go this is what's happening on the saturday morning we went back and visited brian's mum 
and uh, we went we went out for a meal with her to a Chinese restaurant actually it was a Chinese uh, buffet one of those buffet ones I did feel quite vulnerable in there because uh, it was a massive massive place with lots of frit tables and not many people in but they had this they packed us quite close to each other and I did feel quite um uh, quite vulnerable a bit because in the next county Bradford they were closing them down because of an, an increase in coronavirus and up where we live it's not it's really not not a bad there aren't many um there aren't many cases so um we had the meal and then we m mother had uh half a glass no what did you have a large glass of red wine and i think it went to her head so anyway we went off after we took them home we had a coffee with them and then we headed off back home in the end up to our place and the next morning he said right he said we'll get started on tidying up but it wasn't to be because about an, half an hour later we got this panicking phone call from mum's partner who said he couldn't cope with her she wouldn't get out of bed she said she was dying she wasn't well and so in the end his lordship had to jump in his car and drive the hour and now an hour and a half an hour and a quarter down to where they lived to try and find out what the problem was he thinks it might have been a hangover because <laughs> she's not used to drinking that much so and she wouldn't get out of bed and of course her partner was getting irritated because she wouldn't get out of bed and we in the end brian said look when she's like that just leave her in bed he said i know my mum. if you cross her she'll get very irritated with you so he said just leave her where she is so then eventually he came up and we and the plan was that when he came back we'd start tidying up and then of course our friends arrived oh here she is she's been sitting in front of me um our friends arrived from up north who were coming back home and they are the ones that have bought my father's house and they're busy doing it doing it up and so they called to see us on the uh, sunday night so everything was left to the monday for us to sort out so monday we started clearing out it and it's a slow process it really is a slow process but we're getting there we're getting there i've still got quite a lot here to tidy up i can I, I keep planning to show you my sewing room but at the moment i can't show you it because um there are machines that he's brought in there's a big laser machine in through the back there so we've got to find we've got to work our way around it to to put everything in the right place so um and boy is it hot it's been absolutely unbearable for our standards i gather that down in spain it is even hotter it's un i think they're breaking the records for the temperatures in spain my sister in france is saying that they're unbelievable they've never had rain since may and uh apparently yesterday they had a deluge of rain and i think it's coming up our way it was supposed to be thunder and lightning today but it's uh, when we looked at the weather forecast that's disappeared and we're supposed to be getting thunder and lightning tomorrow so we'll just have to wait and see um i wanted to tell you what did i want to tell you what did i want to tell them can you remember oh masks now i just uh, this is a very quickie about masks I may I have made several masks and when I was on on holiday up in Amble I had to put one on my head and it, I haven't got very big ears and they kept they kept dropping off me they kept going like that off my ear so when I was it, I think it was the first day that we were supposed to wear masks and I was spending more time fixing this this elastic around my ear and then when I had it on with my glasses my glasses were getting steamed up and i thought oh this is terrible it's ridiculous i tried every one of the masks that i made and the ones that i made were the ones that were kind of a cup shape that went round so in the end um in the in the the holiday cottage where we were staying they had left us these paper ones like that the paper masks like that and i thought right i'm going to use those instead and when I used those, I've, I've cut the bits off the end there. When I used those, I found those much better. They didn't, they didn't um, steam up my glasses. They seemed to mould round my nose a lot better. And I just liked them. So for a while, I was, I've been wearing paper ones. I just thought, oh, all, that, all those cloth ones that I made, and really they're not working. So I decided that 
I was wearing paper ones and then when I came back I thought I might try my hand at making a couple of these just to see what they're like and uh, so I've cut one up to get the measurement of the size the little piece of metal in here is actually a piece of aluminium which I have I we've got a guillotine we've got aluminium so I can cut that I was a slightly uh, firmer but I'm going to make some of these and I think they will work a lot better than the cup shaped ones in my opinion some of you might say that you prefer the cup shaped ones but uh, for me because I wear glasses and he said the same thing because he had a I'd made him a different version and we both went into a shop and he said I can't see a thing because my glasses are steaming up and I said well you've got to get your glasses over the brow of, you've got to get them the glasses so that they sit like that I said to him, I said, you must make the, sure the glasses are sat over that and that this is firmly on your nose. And we did that, but they immediately steamed up. So, um, as I say, I just, when I had these cloth, these paper ones, these PEP ones, uh, I found that they were much better. So I'm, I'm trying out that, that format and uh, going to see if that works. Now, also... Patricia Van Kamberg, I always get your name wrong Patricia, she sent me a link for a one where this lady has done it that way, she's kind of made the pleats that way, obviously pleating in like that and um, into a cup shape and, and she said more or less the same thing, that it doesn't, it's easier it's easier to uh, to wear and it doesn't mist your glasses up so um, I haven't actually had a good look at that one but uh, it looked quite interesting but in the meantime I'm doing this with mine I've got some spare brown I've cut around this and I'm going to try it with this one and see how that goes um, I also bought from favorite cheap shop boys um some elastic different kinds of elastic I'm, I'm never going to go through all of this but i just went went a bit mad actually i got five meters of a very thin elastic like that i don't know if you can see oh it's tickling her ear a very thin elastic and uh, so i got five meters of that and then i caught my eye on this one which is like a cord and it's actually the kind of cord that goes on the side of the pep ones so I thought, oh, I'll get five meters of that. And then I caught my eye on this one, which is like a very thin tape. A very, it's only a quarter of an inch wide, a cent, less than a cent, half a centimeter. Maybe it's a little bit more than a cent, half a centimeter. What does that say? I would say it's about six or seven mil. And that one, oh, it's caught on my fingernail. That one is just a very thin ribbon type tape and so i bought five meters of that i actually thought that might work on knickers or something but then when i looked at it it's, it's quite soft it has it has a it's not got a firm elasticity about it so uh probably mainly masks why do I, why have i bought that many elastics i do not know but anyway i just i think i just went a bit berserk because i was in the shop and i could shop the one thing that i found is that when you can't, when you haven't been out very often at the shops, you, you kind of go a little bit mad <laughs> when you get a chance to, to buy anything. Um, it's quite difficult trying to wear a mask with that, and you know, it, when you're wearing it a long time, and I really feel for these people who have to wear them all the time at work. Uh, I went up to the post office to post some letters this, this afternoon, and the people who work there have to wear them all the time, and, and by and by golly, it must be uh, really, really hot. And they must have to keep going in the back room to let some air out. Because to wear them full time, it must be very difficult. I'm wearing my Lakala dress with the pockets. I love this. When I got up this morning, when I got up this morning, I had a black t-shirt, long sleeve t-shirt on because it was quite cool. But, but within an hour of wearing it, he, he actually remarked, he said, oh, wow, that's a very nice outfit you've got on. Is it all one piece he says it looks nice because it was a black um slash neck t-shirt that i had on and it sat underneath here and it was uh, three quarter length sleeves and he said that really looks nice it, you know it really is becoming and i said no they're two separate two separate things a pinafette 
a penny apron type dress and a t-shirt and he said well it does look very nice so i am very pleased with this i do have it it does i think it's the way i've sewn it in but it has a tendency to come out on this side with the facing but it doesn't with that side and i have got it sewn down on both sides so i'm not sure why i i think i tend to find it because you always do something with with i'm right-handed and every time i do something i'm doing that sort of and it does bunch it up and I don't think it's probably anything to do with sewing, it's just to do with the way I move my body. Anyway, I think I've talked too much and you'll be fed up, though a lot of you will have skipped through this. Uh, but I just thought I'd keep you up to date with what was going on. We, it's taken three weeks for us to get paid. The, um, or the, the saga of the cheque, um, he didn't want them to, they were going to charge us $84 for to... 84 pounds uh, they were going to charge the solicitor was going to charge 84 pounds to send the money across to us and of course his lordship said i'm not paying 84 pounds for you to send the money across to us what does it cost for a check so they said well, it doesn't cost anything for a check so he said right well send me the check now normal i don't know if things have changed but in in previous times when we've sold houses or we've exchanged contracts the money is in the money is in your account straight away so he expected that the check would arrive i think we had to finalize on the friday he expected the check to arrive on the monday well we were away on holiday that week and when we came back he was spitting because the check wasn't on the dot wasn't hadn't been put through the letterbox so we rang them up on the monday and said where's the check and they said well we're waiting to see if the bank the if, if you've paid we're waiting to hear from the bank to see if your mortgage has been settled first and he said it is settled first because he said they've sent me a letter saying they paid it when are you going to pay me and they said well we'll get a check off today well that was two weeks ago that was a week ago and then on the friday nothing had arrived so he rang them up again and said look what's going on here he said she's promised me it's going to be in monday's post that she's going to post it on friday and it'll be in monday's post so yesterday was monday and fortunately yes it did arrive on monday's post so he was very pleased about it. and so i'm going to finish it is now 10 past eight anyway we'll stop there um i'm going to get on with finishing off or making this little mask for his lordship and um i then have to get this uploaded because i'm running a bit late and hopefully now that all the grandchildren are gone and life is getting fairly back to normal and we are kind of in semi-retirement he still has some orders that people are giving him and i still have quite a few of my orders but we seem to have a little bit more spare time than we usually have and uh, what we'll do is um I sh I'm hoping to make a lot more videos. Now, I've said that so many times, and I know you off you'll probably say, oh, oh, there she goes again. She says she's going to do some videos, and she never does. But I'm determined that I'm going to try and keep up and keep you entertained for as long as I can. So, I shall love you, and I'll leave you, and I'll catch you next time.